Hey guys, Mickey Mask here to get out there outdoors. Um, today we are, I'm, uh, I'm introducing Destiny and Xavier to uh, canning. Uh, we're going to do some uh, some of the, the venison, uh, the deer I got there. Uh, what, what is it now? Almost two weeks, a week ago? Two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Um, took it to a processor. At the time, I didn't have the time. I didn't know it was going to take him quite as long as it did to get it back to me. Uh, but anyway, had him debone it all. Uh, we're trimming it up now and getting it ready to uh, can. So as we uh, go through the process, I'll, I'll take you along. Xavier's learning a little bit about uh, using a blade here. Um, all of our cuttings here, there's a lot of meat left in here. So all of our cuttings that Destiny has trimmed away, which is kind of an excess, we're going to put it in a, <laughs> put it in a bag here. We're going to Ziploc it off. This will be the meat that we will throw in the grinder to make our sausages. So we're on our way. And all of the thing in here is really good and clean though. And that's what you want when you get out of a can, uh, when you're doing a canned meat, you really do want it clean. Uh, but everything in here with the, the grinder, you know, the grinder will help us clean up a lot more of the fat stuff. Like I said, there's a lot, there's way too much meat in there to throw it away. So we're going to bag this up. We're going to uh, seal it off, freeze it for the time when we go to and uh, make our sausage. Well, here we have our seven jars, uh, seven quart jars, large mouth. That's what I always use. Um, even though this year, 2020, these things were very hard to come by. Luckily, I've have some that have been around for a good while and I don't, I'm not afraid to buy these things ahead of time. So I had plenty of them in bulk. I'm going to use that and I'm going to use my little independent little burner here. Uh, our stove is a glass top. So this thing really comes into handy. I've got two of them in case I have a problem with one failing. I use these things for everything. If you guys ever watched any of our videos, I use these things for all the way down to boiling skulls um, <clears throat> to do a European mount. Anyway, I'll throw my canner on here after I get my seven jars all ready up. See, um, put the lids on here real quick and uh, we'll get it going. Destiny's getting uh, two tablespoons of yeah, two of them. Of the uh, we get out the door, get out there outdoors seasoning. We're gonna put two tablespoons in each one of these jars uh, before we do the canning. Actually, we're gonna put these in here, and then we're gonna put some water in. Make sure we fill all the voids with some water, and then uh, we will take them over to the canner, and we'll get that process going here just soon as you want. If you guys are interested in trying out some of the get out there outdoors. Um, seasoning get a hold of me and uh, I'll hook you up you guys can find us on Facebook for that it's yummy <laughs> it is good isn't it Destiny mm -hmm. I don't think there's anything that I put it on that they haven't liked oh, yeah, alright as Destiny was going through here and doing that um, this is something you will do at the again at the end but I'm going to go ahead and make sure I have all this um, seasoning here cleaned off there's a couple of them here that Destiny got a little carried away with <laughs> on me. hey Destiny did you grab that cutting board and take it over to the sink and start rinsing it off please you really want to make sure the tops of these seals are clean clean of everything look right there's some seasoning that dumped on there um, the threads you want clean, but you ain't got to worry about them nowhere near as much as the top edge of this thing because that's where your seal is going to be. Now, after I'm getting ready to put some water in here. After I get the water in, I'll come back through with another paper towel before I put my lids on <clears throat> and, and check them again. But right now, I just wanted to make sure I had everything I possibly could off there. Those look pretty good. All right, 
I got the canner set up my little little internet burner there. Make sure you have the bottom on. Make sure the bottom's in the right way where your legs are going to keep that space off the bottom. Keep some cans, uh, the jars, I say cans, but the jars uh, from being round that bottom and, and getting all that heat from the burner. Uh, we're going to put a little bit of water in here. I like to put about a, a couple inches in, get it started. Um, there's about a gallon of water in this, in this, in this, in this canner here. I'm going to go ahead and get this, the temperature turned on. It's not going to get hot yet while I'm doing that. I'm going to take my jars that are here over to the sink and I'm going to put a little bit of water in them, let them settle down, fill all the voids with some water up to about, oh, about that range right in there. <clears throat> Just using the water to fill any voids that we have in here. And uh, I'm going to put them in the can. Take the jars over here. Uh, like I said, let's put a little bit of water in them. You kind of got to watch. You don't want to put too much water in. But once you do, you see how a lot of these, the, the meat was packed really, really tight in these. And the water level line is about where you want it. You don't want to go over that. So I have my my little magnet here I use for my lids. And uh, this particular one, the handle and stuff's all nice and solid. So I'll use it and I'll poke it down in the meat. And this will help push it into any air voids that are in there. And you see how it just kind of pulls that all that down in there. And then I can do it, just going to do all of them the same way. Maybe even repeat the process twice if I need to. Got them all filled in there now. Um, you don't want to fill these things all the way up. The meat that's in here will juice out some. So leave yourself plenty of room here. Like I said, we would like, to, you know, if you look at it there, you know, three quarters of an inch or so below that bottom ring, uh, about where I like to go. Go around one more time with a damp uh, napkin, paper towel. Uh, make sure the top edge of these things are nice and clean. Um, last thing you want to just go through all of this process and have a failure to seal but once this is all done here now it's kind of up for the bait on this you know guys don't follow my stuff 100 percent and expect you know the exact same results but for me um when i'm doing a cold can okay this is what i'm doing here is a cold can everything in here is cold I don't see no need whatsoever to warm up uh, my lids. But if I'm doing a hot can, I will, just to keep everything nice and warm. So with these, I'll just be putting the lids on and tightening them down. And then uh, getting them over to the canner, which is already on the process of, of, of warming up a little bit for me. Okay, whenever you're putting your lids on here, um, you're going to tighten them down. You don't want to super, super tighten these down. You want them nice and snug, um, you know, a good finger tight tight, but you don't want to really just grip them down tight. Um, all right, I've got my jars going. Like I said, I've got about, a, well, about an inch of water there. I will go through, set all my jars in here in this portion, and then if I need to, I'll fill them up a little bit. So no, I'll arrange them a little bit to where they're not really clanking around on each other too much. I've never had one bust, but I don't want to either. Well, as you can see now, water level wise, we're looking at just about middle of the upright of the jar. Um, that's a little high, um, but it'll be just fine. The last thing you want is for your canner to run out of water. Um, you know, it's not like a water bath where you have to fill it all the way up or anything, but uh, the last thing you want, like I said, is for your canner to run out of water anywhere from an inch, two inches in the bottom after you put your jars in there should get you where you need to be. I almost forgot. A uh, little white distilled vinegar. Put that in there. Oh, 
I'd say for what I have in here is about a gallon and a half of water. We're gonna go with about a quarter cup of the vinegar. Um, that being in the water just keeps the water and stuff, the impurities that might be in the water from turning the glass on your jars white. Um, that's about all it really does. And your lid, okay? You have a nice seal that's around here, okay? If you put this on and don't oil your seal, that thing can be, could be a bear to try to get unsealed, okay? A little bit of vegetable oil uh, on your finger, rub it around there, it doesn't take a whole lot. Um, I use a little bit of a pan and uh, smear it around there and uh, it works just fine. So I'm gonna let this thing run up, you know, about 11 is where I wanna keep it for my elevation. Everybody's elevations will be different. Uh, make sure you know where you're at and what pressures you need to have. But before I put it, before I start building any pressure, I'm gonna let this guy run until this vent tube here is running a nice little solid stream of, of steam. I put my weight on it, it's right here. I'll put my weight on it at that time. Uh, my pressure will get up so high, you know, until right there to 11, probably between 11 and 12. And then I will adjust my heat accordingly once it gets there and to try to keep it that range. I do not want that to go down below. Uh, you know, the, the pressure from my elevation for 45 minutes. Well, I'm still waiting for it to get quite warm. It's getting really close. It's pretty hot to touch. Um, still waiting for that nice little plume of steam to come through. Once it does, then I'll put the weight on it, uh, get it up to temperature, and then I'm looking at, you know, roughly like 90 minutes uh, for the meat. So uh, we're still on standby, still waiting for the steam to come through. It's getting really close. Like I said, you know, with a cold batch like that, you have all of those jars, all of that liquid in there to bring all of that up to temperature. It takes a little bit of time. Uh, I think I'm running at about 35 minutes right now from the time I close the lid to right now. Still waiting for that steam to come up a little bit. So, uh, like I, and I, and you know, earlier, whenever I put that liquid in there and I turned the heat on, um, you know, I'm not letting that water get hot before I put those jars in there. I just turned the heat on because I knew it was going to take a long time to heat that water up and the jars were going in just, you know, instantly after. It wasn't, you know, there wasn't a big time lapse. There wasn't no 15, 20 minutes in between. It was, you know, literally, um, you know, minutes before that water, you know, before I was actually putting the, the jars in the water. So anyway, when you're doing a cold bath, you definitely do not want to mix the hot you know, and cold either way. All right, here you, are. you can see the uh, pressure indicator popped up. We're starting to build pressure in there. Um, this guy right here, as uh, your first indicator, you're starting to build pressure. Um, the weight's on, so if it gets above 15 pounds, uh, you would get your gases and stuff coming through here and we're still waiting for the gauge to rise. Um, I did have the steam coming through here already when I put that on, I just didn't quite video that. Alright, it takes a good while to get it up to this point. Uh, to whenever your little pressure indicator, you know, pops and you start to build pressure. But once you start to, once you start to build pressure on this thing, you know, like right now from zero to now where I'm at, uh, with the you know the heat on high, it's only taking about three minutes or so, and I'm right here close, pushing on almost nine, nine psi there now. At this time, I'm going to back it down. So I had it on high, so I'm going to back it down to about where the eight you know range would be if your high was on a ten. Now I've reached my target range. I'm above 11, and uh, once that hits that point, then you start your timer. Now I'm still climbing. You can watch it here. I'm still climbing with my heat, so I need to back down to now to two. I'm going now from the eight that I was to six and a half, and. Uh, Continue to watch my gauge here to see if it holds steady. There is one more pound. So I knocked it from the six and a half that it was at to five and a half. 
I'm going to sit here and wash it again. I come on down to from five and a half to five. It drops about a quarter, maybe a half a pound. And I've been riding steady right here now for almost five minutes. All right, well, time is up. I'm going to turn the burner off. Pressure's up. Still got pressure inside. Still got the weight on. I will leave all of this as it is. Um, it's actually, like I said, almost midnight. I'm just going to leave it alone, and I'll get this first thing in the morning. Uh, it'll take a while for all this to dissipate. It's not going to hurt anything for this to cool down on its own. Um, Got to wait for this popper here to go all the way down anyway to relieve all the pressure before I start taking any weights off. <clears throat> I get a towel laid out, take the stuff out in the morning, and lay it on there. Well, we end up with success. All of our cans end up sealing, so we had no failures. Uh, I actually pulled these out at like three o'clock in the morning and woke up, uh, pulled them out so they've cooled now. Uh, this is the next day. Everything's good to go. Um, we do have a little bit of stuff here on the tops that, you know, as they were boiling and over and stuff, uh, you know, some of the stuff that had come out on them. Um, but I'll clean those up just a little bit, write the dates on them, and put them down in the uh, cellar. So, uh, Destiny wants to try it, so we're going to go ahead and open this one up. We're going to try this one so they have an idea of what it's going to taste like, and then we'll put the rest away for, for a later time. Go ahead, Destiny. You need something to open it with. You need like a spoon or something. It's very tight. Huh? Very hard to open. I don't know if I can do it. Mm. Let me show you how I do it. Oh, <clears throat> uh, yeah. yeah. I take the spoon <laughs> like this and just go this way. Like this. <laughs> no fork. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I can not have juices all over. Yeah, right. That's cool. Yeah. Oh. It's, it's, like, it's like fish. No. Fish? <laughs> no. You guys like... in your taste test. The other day I deep fried, or I had a heart deep fried, and you said it tastes like chicken. And this then... tastes like steak. <clears throat> well, yeah. Yeah. No, I, I don't know. I don't know what mm -hmm. ta steak tastes I like. I eat a whole jar. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. I thought this was a juice. Do you want to taste it? I don't know it's jarred. It makes me uncomfortable. It's like a so little bit of cook? fish. Yes. Nice. It cooked for 90 minutes Mickey. in a pressure cooker. Mickey, oh, what I mean by it, it's like fish. What's that white stuff? Fat? Yeah. yeah. What I mean by like, like, like it's little fish. Fat. Mickey, what I said by it, it's like fish. Um, Mickey, what I said like. Tastes like. Yeah, that's what roast beef. That, Kinda. Yeah, that's what it was. You try it, Braxton? No. There you go. Alright, it's so good. <laughs> Alright, Parker. No more double dipping, buddy. Yeah, loser. That's gross. You catch me Braxton, in the corner hey. eating a whole jar. <laughs> Braxton, come here. Yeah. I'd say it's a success. We got pizza sitting here, and everyone's hoarding. Around the jar. <laughs> Why are we still eating? What do you think, Parker? Is it good, buddy? That is so good. Yeah? No. I think they have a little mashed potatoes and some gravy. Oh, oh yeah. You. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Well, guys, there you have it. Um, that was the canning video. Uh, a little tutorial. Kind of might be got a little in depth. And, uh, you know, versus a lot of other canning videos out there. You've probably heard of a lot of the stuff over and over and over again. 
But anyway, um, everyone enjoys it. The uh, seasoning really hits the spot on that. Um, a little mashed potatoes or whatever to go with that. That uh, let's serve us up. Oh, excuse me, serve us up just about right. What do you think, Xavier? Parker, is it a win? Huh? Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, guys, as always, you'll have fun and get out there. If you like what we do, hit that subscribe button and uh, catch yourself in the next video.